Hi there, my name is Simon Heuper and I'll be your guide on this last part of two introductory screencasts on the React JavaScript library. In the first part, we got set up with React and created a small Hello World component. Now we're going to expand on that, creating a small application composed of multiple components with data flowing through them. First, let's make the greeter component a little bit more interactive by adding an input field where the user can enter their name and we can greet them. I added a change handler uh, so that we can capture the input from the field and, and show it back to the user. Even though this looks like the very old school change handlers from the 90s, React will, will uh, collect all of these event handlers and add them with uh, event delegation behind the scenes. For event handler we call set state with the text from the input field. Set state is a function that updates the property, the state property of our component. State is internal to our component and not visible from the outside. Over time, as state is changed, the render function in our component is called and a screen is updated. You should never modify the state property directly. Instead, go, always go through the set state method. Back in our render function, we print out the state. We also set the value of the input to the state. This makes the input controlled and uh, it makes it update the contents when the user changes uh, it by entering data into the field. Finally, we add a get initial state function to tell React what the first value of our name should be. After we transpile and refresh the browser, we will see that the user can enter their name into input and get a result back on the screen. Sometimes you'd like data like this to be shared across multiple components. This can be done by moving the state up in a component tree and pass it down via props. Props like state forces components to be re-rendered when they change. But unlike state, it's managed on the outside of the component by a parent component. If we consider our components to be functions, props will be the equivalent of function arguments. Right now, we only have one component. Let's make a parent component which houses the name state and passes it down to the greeter component. We're going to call it app. We can essentially move the get initial state uh, function up to the app component. In the render function of the app component, we will return a div and call the greeter component. We'll pass down the name from the state and modify the greeter component to use props instead of state. And finally, we will render the app component. We'll also move the name capture part of the greeter component out into its own, own component. We'll call it name capture. In the change handler of this, we no longer want to set state because this component is now also working off of props just like the greeter component. In fact, we need to change this value here to be this.props.name. But we do want the state of the app to update, so, so we wanna, we're going to pass down another 
event handler to the name capture component from the app component that the name capture component can then call when the input changes. So instead we call this up props on change. And this is just the name I'm making up on change isn't specific to custom components, only to, to things like input. Finally, we want to add the name capture component to the app component. And also pass in a change handler. And this time we call set state because remember the app component now controls all the, the state re related to the name. We'll transpile and refresh our browser. Visual ID has this is li very little change, but under the hood, we can see that we have a wrapping div, the app component, we have an input, uh, which is the name capture component, and another div which includes the hello world message, which is the greeter component. In this way, you can build complete single page applications by composing deep trees of components. You'd think that forcing updates when props and state changes could be slow, but React implements a DOM diffing algorithm that finds the smallest amount of DOM changes needed and updates the screen in a quick and responsive way. In this final screencast, we've been we've expanded on our Hello World example and made a small application composed of three components. I hope that you found this small series on React helpful. Thank you.